good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, friends. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Marketing Your Practice podcast. Again, how the heck are you? How is life for you? My heart is going out to all of my fellow Melburnians. We're in some kind of world record lockdown here. And I gotta tell you, the novelty is wearing, okay? I do like the time at home. I do like the slowness. I do like the fact that the traffic's not as busy. But I do miss being able to catch up with all my good friends, right? That's it. That's the end of my rant. I want to talk about other stuff today. I want to talk about why marketing is sometimes difficult. Oh, not about so much about why it's difficult, but what to do about the fact that it is difficult and give you some thoughts and or suggestions of why you need to be pushing through the overwhelm, the confusion and the vulnerability. Because there is, there is a level of vulnerability I'm suggesting. Uh, encouraging, sometimes begging for you to be creating videos or content that sometimes has a level of vulnerability that goes along with it. We risk being rejected. We risk failure. It's time consuming. It's all of those kind of things. And the technology, it's interesting. I've coached lots of different practitioners of all different ages there as well. Um, some of them, like me at 45 years of age, didn't grow up with all this kind of stuff there too. So it can at times get really damn confusing. So what do we do it? Now, if you'd have a quick kind of search around the internet, if you were to read some of the marketing books, I've got a bunch of them all over to the side over here as well. We talk about more income and stability for our practice. You know, sometimes you see different marketers telling stories around fancy cars and houses and holidays and all those kind of things there too. Now, here's a thought. I think as a health practitioner in your town, you deserve to be really, really wealthy. Um, you provide great value to your community and you deserve to be um, rewarded for it as well. So I'm all about you having a really great income. The interesting thing is though, if we're looking for motivation here, and really this is what I wanna talk about is what gets us over the difficulty of all those things I talked about before, is that social scientists will tell us, once we kind of move beyond the poverty line, for the vast majority of us, the whole concept of income alone being a motivator for why I would risk all those things I talked about before, it's not really great, it doesn't work, it doesn't motivate a lot of us, and it might get us started, but it often doesn't get us kind of really following through. So what's beyond that? I want to, let, let's play a little game here. And for the game of this little social experiment to have the impact that I want it to have, you got to really imagine and play along with me now. Now, you'll be able to do this if you're driving along with a car, walking with a car, if you're driving along in the car, if you're walking the dog, all of those kind of things. I want you to imagine that you're standing up the top of the Empire State Building, okay? Whatever, a really tall building is what we're talking about here too. And just across from you, when you're looking over at the other buildings out there, there's another really tall building. Now my, uh, I was going to say my anatomy of New York, but my geography of New York is not so great. But let's pretend there's another really enormous building just 100 meters away. And between the two buildings there is a wooden path. The wooden path is about a meter wide. So about as wide as what the footpaths or the sidewalks are. So wide enough, like we walk along the side path, the footpath, whatever worrying that we're going to kind of fall off it there too. But the difference is that this is now literally hundreds of meters up in the air. Now, the first challenge is this, is I'm going to challenge you to walk hundreds of meters up the air from one building to the other. And if you get over to the other side there, let's just say this, I'm going to put $100,000 on it, okay? So would you walk for $100,000? Let me give you one more bit of information that's kind of important here as well. What I know from this experiment, and I'm making up these figures here, is that one out of four of you will fall, okay? And when you fall from that height, Unfortunately, it's kind of the end game as well. So you've got a 75% chance of getting 100 grand. Now, 100 grand is nothing to snooze at, sneeze at, snooze at. Man, I've got the fumbles today. It's a lot of money, but 100 grand is not going to change a lot of your lives there as, as well. Now, when I ask this question, I often do it to a kind of live audience. There's always a bunch of people put their hand up. They go, yeah, yeah, I would do that as well. What I like to do next is kind of ramp up the stakes. So let's let's ramp them right up. So let's go, we've said 100 grand before. Let's say now it's 10 million bucks. So for most of you listening, $10 million will really change your life in a significant way. It will also change the life of the family members in around you as well. You could donate a bunch of that money to you know, change community groups. You could have real impact with regards to that too. But in order to get the 10 million bucks, I'm going to kind of up the stakes further again. And this time it's raining and it's a little bit windy. And so instead of one in four of you falling, now two in four. So you've got a 50% chance of getting that $10 million. So check in for a moment. Like, would you risk your life for a 50% chance of 10 million bucks? Now, when I ask this question 
to an audience, even less people raise their hand. We understand the value of a human life and most of us aren't prepared to risk even, and I can keep on going up, you know, 10 million, 100 million, all those kind of stuff there too. And it'll push some people, but for many of us, there's no amount of money that we would risk our lives. But if I change one thing, I can get the audience almost, well, I can get almost 100% of the audience to raise their hand. And here's all I need to do is now what I tell them is that I want you to imagine on the other building over there, there's a person who's really important to you, a loved one, husband, a wife, a child, that kind of thing there too. And their safety requires that you get your way across there, okay? And even though of the chances were still that kind of 50-50 of you getting across, how many of you would do it? And immediately, almost every hand in the audience goes up. And I wonder for you, like what's your gut feeling as you hear me going through the story? If you're like most other people, that's enough to get you to move. And it reminds me that as human beings, one of the wonderful things about us as human beings is that we do way more for the health and the well-being of other people than we would for ourselves. And so if you're having a difficult time with your marketing, then you're probably not using the most the strongest motivator. You haven't cued into what marketing is all about. And what reminded me really of this is I was kind of thumbing my way through Instagram last week and one of my coaching clients had put a post up on his Instagram feed and I'm going to read it for you now. I've got his permission to read it here as well. And it reminded me really of why we market in the first place. In fact, it's one of the things that I really love about working with so many natural health practitioners, so few of us. And again, totally okay if you got into, if you decided to become a chiropractor because it's cool hours and you could earn a bunch of cash, because you can. It's definitely, it pays beautifully and the hours are great, along with you know many of the naturopaths, the other practitioners out there. These are nice earning jobs there as well. But so few of the people who I know and who I speak to that that was the primary drive. So I'm looking my way through Instagram. I come across this post from one of my coaching clients and I read it. Here's what it says. I came across an ad on Facebook about help for migraine relief, and I decided to give it a go because other things I've tried have not produced results. Now, I've been seeing Dr. Chris only for a few months, and the change I've already accounted, sorry, encountered is outstanding. I've gone from at least one migraine and multiple headaches a week to maybe one migraine and a small headache the odd time in approximately three weeks. I definitely recommend Cameron Chiropractic. Super friendly and welcoming. I drive about 45 minutes to get there, and I don't regret it for one moment. Now, here's the interesting thing. If it wasn't for all the great videos that Chris makes, if it wasn't for the Facebook ad that Chris ran here, there's a woman, April is her name here, who now no longer is on her way to having no more migraine headaches. The marketing that we do is really nothing to do with ourselves. Now, whilst we might get some of the side benefits at the end, a busier practice, you know, more income, all of those kind of things, the real drive to why we need to push beyond and outside of our comfort zones is to find people like April, when I'm thinking about creating my marketing, I have this little thought in the back of my head of, let me find people who want my help. That's it. Whether it be, again, right now with this podcast that I'm creating, I know that there's a health practitioner, whether it's a chiropractor, a naturopath, a dentist, there's someone out there right now that will listen to this and that this, I'm hoping and praying that this will be enough to kind of push them forwards, to move them outside of their comfort zone so they can reach more people. Because our communities, my community, your community, is full of people like April. In this case here, she's got a migraine, but maybe you're really great at helping people with digestive problems, fertility issues, sciatica, whatever it is, there's people out there that are really struggling that as April said, she feels like she's tried everything else. And it wasn't until Chris put himself outside of his comfort zone, learned the skills, took the steps forward, ran the ads, built the relationships with her there where she, finally she raised her hand and said, you know what, I trust this person enough to go and give them some help. I want to leave you today with one of my favorite quotes. It's a quote I love sharing all the time inside many of the trainings inside the Community Influencer platform. And it's from one of my absolute mentors. I've kind of mentioned it previously episodes ago on the Marketing Your Practice podcast, but it kind of sums up many of the things that I've been talking about today. And hopefully it'll inspire you to take the next step to reach out into your community as well. Here's what the amazing Seth Godin says. He says, we bring value to the world when we market. That's why people engage with us. If you don't market the change that you'd like to contribute, then you're stealing. If you hesitate to market your offering properly, it's not that you're being shy. It's not that you're being circumspect. It's that you're stealing because there's somebody who needs to learn from you, engage from you or buy from you. Someone will benefit from your better if you get out of the way 
and you market it. There's a student who's ready to sign up. There's somebody who wants a guide, who wants to go somewhere. And if you hesitate to extend yourself with empathy to hear them, then you're letting us all down. We don't, when we don't, learn the skills to market with heart, heart-centered marketing. There are people in our community that suffer as a result from it. And I share in what Seth says as well, it's not that we're being shy, it's not that we're being circumspect, it's that we're stealing. Gang, that's my thoughts for today. Thanks for all that you do. Your community so, so desperately needs you to step up, needs you to learn these skills. This podcast is full of all that you need to know in order for you to market, how to make videos, all those kind of things. If you head on over to the anguspike.com, you can download over there. I've got a handout of 100 different video ideas that'll kind of help you break through the noise as, as well. And if you want some help with this as well, send me an email. I'm happy to help. I love doing it. Gang, until next time, as I said before, thanks for all that you do. Keep saving lives. See you back here real soon. Bye. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to apply, implement, systematize, and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now, you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.